What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush. Let's talk Jets Radio. Thank you to everybody who's been watching our videos and joining us. We truly appreciate all the support. You know, the day after a humiliating loss, you always try to figure out the state of the organization, where they're going in the direction. And as a longtime fan, I've seen a lot. More, more bad than good. And there are so many glaring red flags right now that just smack you in the face endlessly. From the general manager to the coach, to the coordinators, to the players. There's a lot There's a lot of red flags. It's just, it is what it is at this point. It's hard to ignore it. You know, we gave this team a pass, even with ownership. I think right now, when, when they hired Robert Sala, everybody was so complacent and so happy because everybody's rewarding them. You guys got a great coach. You're rebuilding. And we gave them a pass for so many things where they almost seemed content. Like, you know what? We're good. We're okay. Everybody bought in. They're going to buy tickets. They're going to buy jerseys. And we're going to be fine no matter what happens. And they're playing and coaching like that. There's no accountability. There's no sense of urgency. There's no direction. There's no blueprint. And, and the, the problem you have is this. This coach came in with this, this mantra, all gas, no break. And I initially thought back to Rex Ryan when Rex Ryan was first hired. His initial press conference, you were ready to run through walls for this coach. Everybody bought in. A lot of veteran players bought in. So now you, tra you come forward to this. Robert Sala comes out, all gas, no break. You have a very young, impressionable team that's all buying in because they don't know any better. You have one of the youngest teams in football. They're all, listen, this is your message. We're buying in. And they come out and they're anything but that. They're being poorly coached. They're, there's no accountability. There's no motivation. And they're losing day in and day out on and off the field to the point where it's embarrassing. Yesterday's game was one of the most embarrassing games I've ever seen the Jets fan. And that's saying a lot because we sat through a lot of this. So you listen to the press conferences today, and I understand it's only words, but this is where you're supposed to be changing your culture. This is how you're supposed to be establishing, you know, your precedent and getting your, your you know, just moving forward as an organization, your direction, everything. And it's nothing. And, and we'll go with the offense. This offense has not scored a point in the first quarter this season. So now they ask Mike LaFleur, why, you know, how did you get your young quarterback comfortable? Well, he figured the first two running plays would get Zach Wilson comfortable. Say what? So now third and long, his first pass is getting your quarterback comfortable on the road. How about short passes? These are all your scripted plays. Furthermore, your head coach is overseeing all of this. What's being lost among some people is they had two weeks. You had a bye week and you kept telling us all how you self-scouted, how you got to make all these changes. You fixed all these different things. Your team came out unprepared and were thoroughly outcoached throughout the game. And it wasn't even close on both sides of the football. So there, you listen to these guys talk today, and you're, you lose more and more faith because they have no credibility. Can you imagine what this locker room saying right now after another loss like this when you know how badly, how poorly run you are? Like, the problem with Salah is he's too nice, he's too friendly. Everybody's way too comfortable here. Everybody embraced the rebuild, and everybody's comfortable. There's no, there's no mandates. There's no, hey, man, if you don't win this or put like the put up or shut up. That was his mantra going into the game. It's put up or shut up time, and you got humiliated. And what happened the day after? You justify, you justify losing. You're making more excuses. And then they're talking about, oh, you know what? I still have faith in this team. We can win championships. Dude, how about, trying, how about winning the first quarter? Like, what are we doing here? Like, seriously, does anybody else not see, like, the glaring problem you have here with a young, impressionable team? They're, what culture are you teaching here? Where do you, what are they learning? There's no progress. There's no improvement. And now the most important part of your team, your rookie quarterback, is hurt. And he's out and he's missing time. But the, the, only, the only reason for this, we change regime, regimes to bring in a guy that can, can, culture, can create our offense, bring our offense to the NFL level, and develop the quarterback. Our offense is easily one of the worst in the NFL. It has no rhyme or reason. The offensive coordinator is so far in over his head. And the quarterback is lost. Before he got hurt, he wasn't even playing well. Again. So what this season is, being, is becoming a lost season for the coach, for the quarterback, for the coordinator. It's a mess. There's no improvement here. There's no development here. And now you got three tough games ahead of you. So what are you, like, what are you doing? This, everybody's getting a pass. Oh, no big deal. It's just, hey, it is what it is. There's nothing here. There's nothing, you, you, nothing to hang your hat on. So now they go out and trade for Joe Flacco. Now the move they made today is something they should have did four months ago. It's like the Jets are being reactionary to all the mistakes they're making. They're panicking. Like, they don't know what they're doing. Like, they just seem like, oh, shit, now we got to do this. Now we got to do this. Like, there's no, there's no foresight of what's to come. 
Like, it's just everything is reactionary. And what's, what's, what it's hurting is your young players and your quarterback. It's like, oh, well, now, now Zach Wilson can learn from him. You're already 1-5 and five and he's already hurt. This, this could have helped four weeks ago, week one. Like, do, how does anybody have faith in anything the Jets are doing right now? I don't understand. It's impossible. You can't, like, what, I mean, I, I don't understand it. And I just, this is, there are so many problems here. And now you're saying now the trade, de the trade deadline's coming. You want to trade away players, great. Then you want to have more draft picks, wonderful. The, the, the general manager's got to draft good talent. And then you got to use the talent. I mean, I, I don't understand. Like, if Solid is the true CEO, the true guy that watches over everything, what is he watching and what is he doing and what is he changing? What are they doing? It's all hot air, man. They're just, it's all just, it's coach speak that has no impact on the field or in the locker room. So we'll see what happens. I mean, this is just as bad as it gets. I tried to calm down and th try to, you know, try to find positives. And the more you think about how they played yesterday coming off a of bye and how they were thoroughly embarrassed, it's, it's inconceivable. And now they're going to have team meetings. Like we had a meeting, we had an honest discussion. You were one in four in a bye. Your discussion should have been then. You weren't good then. Like, they didn't show up in London. They got a couple breaks against a, a short man, you know, a short man Falcon team. Terrible.